So as you already know, I'm Colin Crocker. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> So as Senator Pullman said, uh, we were actually just in Ireland, for all the Irish people in the room, and we were celebrating our Irish citizenship. And in Ireland, we went to Sale, Dublin, and my grandfather led us all around the coolest places in Ireland, and it was honestly a, the most amazing trip ever. And so, on our way back from Ireland, he tells me about this event to introduce him to all these people to the award. And I was a little confused at first, saying, what is this event? What should I say? And he gives me a couple ideas. Um, well, first, he would talk about how good of a golfer I am, how good of a basketball player I am, just how good looking I am. On the more serious side of things, um, so as Senator Foreman said, I was my seventh grade homeroom representative is where I lead a small portion of my grade and I represent them. And so one day they called all the homeroom representatives into a meeting and in the meeting they asked to write down a leader who we admire on this paper. And of course everybody's writing down like Tom Brady, their favorite quarterback, Martin Luther King, and I wrote down my grandfather, and here is Ed Crawford. surprise for Ed. And now uh, once again, here's the Council General from Chicago, Eden Crawford. Thanks, Jerry. Ed, Colin, Senator Portman. One of the high points of my time here in the Midwest of the United States was when our teacher, Enda Kenny, visited Cleveland two years ago and stood on a similar stage. And one of the high points of his visit was meeting Ed Crawford and visiting the cultural gardens. The Taoiseach would have liked to be here tonight. He's got a, a busy schedule, as you all know. But if he's not here in person, he's here electronically, let's say. He's here in spirit. So ladies and gentlemen, on Taoiseach, the Prime Minister of Ireland, Enda Kenny. Good evening, greetings from Dublin Villiers here in Dublin. I'm sorry I can't be with you this evening in person at the Mayor Society Ball, but I do hope that you are all enjoying an interesting and an entertaining weekend and I'm sure congratulations to the Cleveland Mayor Society are fully in order for another wonderful occasion. It is great to see how successfully Mayo people all over the world manage to sustain their connection to their Mayo roots. I'm delighted to congratulate Ed Crawford on being awarded the 2014 Cleveland Person of the Year Award, especially as he is the first non mayor person to receive this honour. When I met Ed in 2012 at the Irish Cultural Garden, I was impressed by the hard work that had gone into creating a beautiful space which reflected Ireland's cultural heritage and the links with Cleveland's male community. As the grandson of Irish immigrants from Boer Wee in County Cork, Ed has been hugely successful in business while still keeping in touch with his roots. He has given back to the Irish community in Cleveland with projects like the Irish Cultural Garden and his work to keep his links to Ireland a very strong deal. His business success has seen him acquire businesses back in Cork, the county of his ancestors, who left Ireland to seek a new life in America. For all that he has done on behalf of the Irish American community, 
I congratulate Ed Crawford. Ed, thank you for your hard work and for your contribution. You are a worthy recipient of this award. Finally, let me also congratulate and thank the Assembly of Mayo Societies for the work you do during the year, maintaining and strengthening the links between the Mayo diaspora and our country here in Ireland. Thank you. God bless you, Margaret. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Possessions is a 1980 red Corvette convertible. I've had it for a very long time, and I finally have identified the new owner in the future, Alan Crawford. I want to thank the Mayo Society. Uh, this is a great honor, and uh, the concept of moving from as I said, it was a, it's an honor, and I want to congratulate the Mayor Society particularly uh, Scanlon and Quinn, and many others. And who uh, uh, follows uh, some legends. I could go on and on and on, but uh, you know, you put the names uh, Boland and Conway and, and Kale and others. You know, so to all the past recipients, thank you. It dawned on me when the, I first started hearing the rumor that they might change and move towards a concept of expanding, you know, it's opening up the uh, prospects of other uh, counties in Ireland being chosen or some be chosen. I was a little concerned because most of my uh, uh, friends from Mayo seem to be feeling they're very sophisticated and educated and beautiful and wealthy and they're, they have a view of themselves. And the thought that they would uh, reach down and, and go into court uh, was, I, I didn't think it made a lot of sense. Because I think their view of a court is there are just a bunch of rascals down there. But it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a wonderful move to expand the Irish community. I think it's an important part of what the Irish heritage is in America. This is a small example of how we get getting bigger and better and stronger because we're together. <laughs> now I uh, was, you know, thinking yesterday, uh, what effect getting this particular honor? What would I get out of this? And how would I feel about it? And what did it mean to me? And I started thinking about my experiences, and I want to give you a sense of my view of, of being Irish. I think there are many in this room that felt the same way at one time in their life, if being Irish or not being Irish. But clearly, uh, we landed in Cleveland in 1948, Ended up in being in Cleveland Heights. Ended up in a basement apartment with my two brothers, a mom and dad. I remember walking out of there and ultimately going into the fifth grade at Roxborough. When I walked up the street and turned left, I had just left the basement apartment, and when I turned left, I looked at all these beautiful homes. They looked like hotels. <laughs> And I, I couldn't understand, you know, how, what happened here. And then when I got involved at the school and so forth, and I met uh, my students or my friends, 
They were all very nice, but they were different. They were dressed differently. They talked about their clubs. They had clubs to go swimming to. They all were members of golf clubs. And I found this uh, very interesting because I was confused. Because not that I didn't have those things, why they have them. And, and I started thinking about this, and, and I, I, I think subconsciously, and this is the most uh, personal thing I can say about my career and my life, is that they seem to have a club. They seem all to belong to something. I didn't belong to anything. We were just an Irish family. And that's, uh, at the time, I was a little off balance initially, but I started to think about being Irish. And when I started my first business, I remember going out and trying to raise the capital. I decided to say to everyone, I thought it was pretty impressive that, well, I finished it, well, I think this is a great idea and I'm gonna build this great company and I'm gonna have a great future and you should really invest with me. And I would say, incidentally, I'm Irish. I didn't realize half the people I was talking about didn't really like the fact I was Irish. <laughs> you know, remember that old thing, no, uh, no, no one apply? So, but there were people listening, listening. And the reason I, I concentrated on saying that, I still say it today, is because it was a sense that I had a club. I belonged to something. I didn't understand it then, I understand it more today. But belonging is very important. And at that time, we didn't have much. We had our family, but I had the idea that I was Irish. I thought that was very, very special. It turns out to be, it's a fact. But these are the things that happen in your life that make a difference. And I think this is a simple way of expressing to you, we've been very fortunate. This is all about a family. It's all about a success of a family. I'd like to introduce my wife, Mary Crawford. <laughs> my son and his wife, Debbie, are not uh, available this evening. They had a previous commitment two years ago. We'll go along with that, but they do have uh, Pat and Jay Dillon, uh, Debbie's parents. Uh, I think you uh, you should meet Claire, because she'll probably be the CEO of the office of company pretty soon. And of course you have, uh, you already know the guy that owns the uh, Corvette. <laughs> This is a real honor. I really appreciate this recognition. I, re I appreciate it because it's all about a family, and it's all about what you can accomplish. And look what our family has done in one generation in America. Let me talk about America. You can't, if nowhere in the world can you get from that basement apartment, passing those big houses to where we are today, only in America. So God bless. God bless the club and God bless America. specifically for Edward F. Crawford. And it says on it, I hope I don't drop it. It says 2014 Mayo Society Person of the Year, Edward F. Crawford. Congratulations, Eddie.
Corvette back? <laughs> Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hope to see you all again next year. By the way, we got some great entertainment coming up. We got the Murphy College Art Center. They're going to do some good stuff dancing now. Gene Scalvani and the Cleveland Pops Orchestra. So make sure you stay around. We got a great night ahead of us. Don't go away. <laughs>